Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Um, you might hear some snoring because <laughs> I am sitting here with Ms. Maya, who is sleeping right now. And she's a little bit of a snorer because she's a Boston Terrier and she's a little old lady, she's 14. But she's so cute and she makes me feel calm, which I need whenever I'm gonna talk about Diva Curl stuff because it gets me kind of upset um, sometimes, understandably. Um, so I just wanted to update you guys. Uh, not really good news. Um, so about a week ago, um, I had some people come and film me to be part of a documentary that's gonna shine light on um, some toxic products. They want to include the Diva Curl story, which is great, but that won't come out for a while. I think until like spring of next year. And they have been trying to help me find a lab that would test the products and do the testing that we need that would show if the plastic leached into the product. It's called extractables and leachables. I've been trying to get this testing done by contacting private labs myself um, and universities and whatnot for almost a year now. So I know that it's not easy, but I kind of hope that because they had, you know, I don't know, more influence power than me or were more, maybe would be, maybe, I was like, maybe the labs are just saying no to me because they think, because I'm a hairstylist, that I won't be able to afford it, even though I said I would raise any amount of money needed for the testing. I could never even get as far as getting a price from a lab. They would, the furthest I got with a lab was just sending me a brochure about extractables and leachables testing. Um, and then they never gave me a price quote. They just stopped responding to me. I'm not sure why that happens. And the documentary team that's been trying to help me get set up with the lab and to agree to do the testing. Um, they have also been having a lot of trouble. And it's really upsetting because it's like consumer protection does not exist in the United States. Um, you guys might have, if you haven't, you should need to look up uh, the recent releases from the FDA of a bunch of hand sanitizers that they're recalling, which keep in mind, like your skin is your largest organ and it's absorbent and you absorb the things that you put on your skin into your bloodstream. That includes hair products. It also includes your hand sanitizer and your soaps and all that stuff. So um, like I even switched to dish soap. that was a bar soap and it has no, is fragrance free and colorant free and vegan and all that um, because I realized, oh, I'm washing dishes multiple times a day and I was using like dial that comes in plastic and is probably super toxic. Um, so yeah, when you start thinking that way, not everything's gonna click right at once. It's sort of like you start integrating everything that you can immediately notice first, um, like my toothpaste, I switched to like a toothpaste that doesn't come in plastic and you know, I stopped using tampons and pads and started using a cup, a silicone cup and like just a bunch of different changes. Anyway, so, you know, we have to educate ourselves to protect ourselves because regulation of consumer products in the United States at best is like an afterthought. <laughs> Like they're like, okay, are a bunch of people getting sick? Okay, now let's look into it. Not like, let's make sure the products are safe first before they go to market, which is what it should be, but it's not. So like ironically, Diva Curl is not sold in Germany, but the company that owns Diva Curl is Henkel and they're German, but they don't sell the products in Germany because they don't meet the product safety standards and quality standards that they have there. We just don't have those kind of standards here. So when you don't have those kinds of standards and testing that's required by the government and ideally done by the government and their labs and not by the company's own private labs that they hire and pay whatever amount of money to, you know, hopefully give them honest results, um, we have to protect ourselves by figuring out like what 
what could put me in harm's way and avoiding those things. So you guys know, cause I've talked about it so much that, you know, plastics are really not regulated well in the United States. And so I don't, I can't trust a company to keep the product safe, meaning like climate controlled from the time it's created to the time that I purchase it, especially if they're selling through third party distributors like Amazon or other retail businesses like Ulta's and Sephora's and stuff. So they're all supposed to climate control cosmetics, but I just think um, it it doesn't work out sometimes and they're not being checked on and so they don't because it's so expensive to do so. Um, and unfortunately, we live in a society, in an economy that's going to put the profits of the economy and the benefit of the economy over the safety of the people. And so, um, you know, that's a much larger conversation to be had. I'd love to be someday in front of Congress helping legislation get passed that actually protects us so this doesn't happen again. But until then, um, until then, we have to figure out how to protect ourselves. Otherwise, this is going to keep happening because what happened with Diva Curl is they're not the exception. It's an example of the problem. The problem is their lack of regulation. This is what happens when you don't regulate properly. Is this happening in a lot of different areas? Of course. I mean, this happens with like medical devices and, you know, a lot of different things. But, um, and if you go to the FDA's website, you can actually look at like their most recent you know, consumer product warnings that they've sent out to companies telling them you can't claim this does this, but they're mostly focused on like people making claims about helping like cure COVID-19 and stuff. And that's not true. They're very like focused on that right now, which is totally understandable, but this is happening right now too. So what really scares me and makes me feel that I need to keep creating content about the Diva Curl issue is that, um, uh, there's not going to be anything done, it seems like, on a much larger scale than what I've done so far, which is raising awareness through social media. It doesn't seem like that's going to happen anytime soon. And I hate to say that because I've been trying really hard not to believe that. I've been doing everything possible to make it happen, to get the testing. Because if we can prove what's in the product, like have a lab report say, yes, this toxic chemical that is in these products and it can cause all these um, health issues. Like I have a lot of women who I speak with who they gave birth early or they had a really, really late um, miscarriage and they're just all these stuff went haywire that even if they had had children in the past, they didn't have any of these issues and there was nothing like genetic that ran in their family. Um, it was just really kind of unexplained tragedy. And there's just too many of them for it to be a coincidence. It's like the only common common denominator among all these women was like their use of Diva Curl during like 2018 or 2019 when their hair and scalp were experiencing issues simultaneously. It's not like they were using the products and not suffering the damage to their hair and the damage to their scalp and they just had the, the fertility issues or pregnancy complications. Um, it was always both. So the problem is that, you know, the focus is that this is a hair product. And so this is a hair problem, but it's not a hair problem alone. It's also a major health problem. Um, so anything that you apply to your skin should be considered like a drug and you should look at it and the quality of it the same way you would consider the quality of a drug that you were going to take or a food that you were going to eat. Um, the safety of it is really, really important. So... Um, it's tough to accept that the most I might be able to do is videos like this and just hope that each video reaches a person that the last one didn't reach and that people start to take it more seriously um, and realize that although it's uncomfortable and inconvenient to think, oh, I've been poisoned and this might have affected like other parts of my life and my physical well-being, if we don't talk about it and face that reality, we're going to prolong the amount of time it takes to get a recall. I really hope that there ends up being a recall. Um, the products will be on the shelves and sitting in warehouses getting more and more harmful and toxic, uh, probably for at least another year if they're not recalled. So it's frightening because the symptoms that people will show 
when they buy the products later on after they've been exposed possibly to heat for like a longer period of time, those products are going, I don't know what those products are going to do to people, knowing how much damage they've done to people already. Um, so if you've had a bunch of weird, unexplained allergic reactions, if you've been having a lot of autoimmune issues that were kind of like unexplained as well, maybe it's not random <laughs> if you also were experiencing damage to your hair and damage to your scalp while using the products. So I know that's not a peaceful thought. I have to deal with it on a personal level too. I also suffered from using the products. I also had a lot of health conditions that um, mysteriously appeared and then disappeared during Diva Curl use and then following discontinuing the use. Um, so I'm sorry to have to have those conversations because I know it would be, it would be I wish I didn't have to. I wish I didn't have to, but I do feel responsible um, for doing that because if we write this off as something that's just a hair problem, like if it was just a hair problem, oh, there wouldn't be so many people who even when they stop using the products, their hair is still like falling out or growing out of their head, looking a different color or a different texture. Um, that indicates the chemicals being inside the body, which is not surprising considering you're applying it to your hair and you're applying it to your scalp when it's wet. And especially if you're using wet warmth, the warmth is gonna open up your pores of your scalp so that um, the products can more easily get into the bloodstream. So, and Diva Curl recommends using their conditioners with like heat to deep condition. That's like the worst possible thing that you could do, especially with like a cap on and stuff, keep it. But yeah, so there's still a lot of resistance to what's going on. Um, there's still a lot of people that call me crazy or worse. Um, but with over 60,000 people in a Facebook group, um, most of which were impacted by the products, it cannot be ignored and it should not be written off as something I'm just saying and I'm just claiming. Even though it's easier to choose a um, punching bag as a single individual, um, when you insult me, you're insulting all of those people as well. They just might not have to hear it or feel it as often as I do. Um, so I'm here for them. I'll never stop being here for them, for you. Um, I still even had get clients in the salon who like, can't give up one of the products, you know, and think that their hair wasn't affected and I can see that it was. Um, it's very hard to come to terms with and I get that. It took me many months of my own suffering to finally pinpoint that the products could have something to do with it because that's how much I trusted them. All right, so that's all for the check-in for now. I really hope that um, everybody's doing all right. I really want to reinforce how important it is if you have been impacted by the products to try and cut non-perishable plastic items that you consume through your skin, through eating, or through drinking um, out of your life if you really want to fully heal. That's the only thing that got me to a place where I feel 100% like myself again and my hair is growing out of my head, normal and healthy and thick and fast, but it wasn't because uh, just because I stopped using the Diva Curl products, I had to do a lot of lifestyle change. So, um, like, this is the least important thing to me. And people's hair is the least important part of this problem. It's like so much deeper than that. And that'll all come out eventually when we get the products tested. For now, I guess you just have to trust me or not. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Be safe. Be well. Take care of yourselves. Do something that makes you feel good inside. As you can tell for me, it's kind of like plants and my dogs. Um, and so there's some more over there. So do something that makes you feel good um, and helps distract you from, from the hard stuff you're going through because coping is not simple. It is a journey. Um, and I still have days that I just throw myself on the couch and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. But um, life is always worth living and there will be another side of this where it's something that happened to us instead of something that's happening to us right now. I love you so much. I'll talk to you soon. You can find me on Instagram at Steph.Marrow. Take care.